we're going to go over there and we're going to notch a rhinoceros and what that means is we're going to well we're not we're going to film it the conservation team here is going to take a couple of notches out of a young rhino's ears and that those notches will designate it a certain number each notch has a certain numerical meaning which is uh, almost more difficult to fathom than e equals mc squared So Bochafonden has a notching program that we've established in a few years. So we notch the rhinos to identify them and also to assist us to manage their population. For rhino mobilization, especially here at Bochafonden, we have a lot of challenges, nutritional issues on the rhinos and stuff. So you've got to be very careful on how you balance your drugs and what strength of drugs you use. Most people can't afford to keep rhinos because purely of the security and Bachofonden is well secure reserve and everyone wants to bring their rhinos, yeah. But it comes with complications of managing nutrition and condition and so on. So it's costing them a lot of money to feed those rhinos. So there's a little bit of confusion currently as to where exactly this rhino is. But the chopper pilot has got a view of about four or five. He's just trying to identify the right one that is unnotched on the ear. And they'll chase her up into this clearing here. And then they'll dart her. And in about four or five minutes after she's been darted, she'll go down, we'll nip in, do the notching. All right, the dart is in now. And so, this has been really nicely done. The warthogs were obviously slightly concerned about what's going on here. It's not a normal Saturday morning for them. Right, we're just running now. She's gone down in a very rocky area. Shut him. Blindfold on now. The greatest risk is um, the anesthesia and respiration, the breathing. So you got to ensure that the breaths remain between six and eight breaths to ten breaths per per minute because if they stop breathing it's impossible to do a, a, a CPR on a huge animal like this. A cardio respiratory resuscitation in a mechanical manner is literally impossible so we got to keep them going with drugs so we see the breaths drop a little bit we give them some drugs to make the breaths go up to partially reverse we continuously partially partially reverse the, the anesthetic and that's vital. I'm just trying to get the legs in the right position now. This one is. Uh, Megan, so are you happy? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay. okay, the samples we took was the first sample was blood that I took from the vein on one of the ears, and it's in EDTA blood, and that is for DNA or genetic purposes they can extract the DNA from the white cells of the blood. The other samples we took was <coughs> of the ear, the actual tissue sample where we notched the ears and the notching involves marking the ear in a very specific way so it gives it a number and those pieces of skin that we take out of the ear or pieces of ear we use for DNA as well. And the other sample we took was hair, you know, and we took from the tail and from the ear. So, uh, so the Rhodes uh, uh, system, which is the Rhino DNA and uh, index system, requires us to put three uh, microchips on a Rhino. So you will put your uh, the front horn, uh, the back horn, and and on the body. Just working with these animals is a privilege. Every day I get in the helicopter, my helicopter pilot, I always say to us, it's an absolute privilege. We've got the best office in the world and we don't take it for granted. 
and to have access like that and to be able to be so close to it was a real privilege and also to see how they've turned a very serious kind of conservation effort or intervention into a guest experience which leaves guests with a massive sense of appreciation for the work that is done here at Welkefonden. So it was a really profound morning and we're very grateful to have been part of it.